time, distance, people, love. These are things that Makoto Shinkai knows how to express and has shown that with great promise towards the beginning of his career with Voices of the Distant Star and the place promised in our early days. But when it was announced he was making a new film in the summer of 2006, little did his fans and critics know he was making a dynamic change in both storytelling and his execution. Instead of trying to make a story about staying connected with one another, or trying to get a form of connection back, Shinkai took the science fiction elements out of it and made a film about one boy's attempts to connect with a girl he has a crush on, only to slowly accept that she's moved on. This turned a new leaf for him as he was able to be more relatable to his audience than he ever was before, and it was with his huge jump in empathy that when this movie came out, it was once called the greatest anime film not made by Hayao Miyazaki. Let's see how he pulled it off on the latest edition of the Makoto Shinkai Project, Episode 4, 5 Centimeters Per Second, a chain of short stories about their distance. Okay, so after looking through the script one more time before I press record, I just realized that I basically wrote the entire plot of the movie on here. Fortunately, I have found the entire movie on YouTube, and the link to it is in the description down below for anyone who wants to watch it before going back up here. I highly suggest it because, like I said, I basically am describing what happens in this movie like every single part of it so i highly suggest that you go down and watch it if you don't want to that's fine just uh you've been warned being that his stories are best told in fairly short run times entering this stage in his career this 65 minute feature film was separated into three parts the first part titled cherry blossom is set in 1995 and follows a boy named takaki who befriends a transfer student named akari and they hit it off. But after they finish elementary school, Takaki is forced to move again due to her parents' job, but they still communicate through sending letters to each other. But when Akari writes that she has to move again to the other side of the country, which would make it harder to send letters back and forth, Takaki decides to go see her in person one more time before she leaves. After Takaki's train is delayed multiple times, he finally sees Akari and they both share their first kiss. The first part ends after Takaki leaves the next morning promising to Akari that he would still write to her. The second part, titled Cosmonaut, is set four years later in 1999, where Takaki is now in high school. This part follows a girl named Kanai, who has had a crush on Takaki since middle school but has never had the courage to confess it to him. But when she tries to spend time with him, she sees Takaki just looking down at his phone writing emails to someone, but after further review, he ends up deleting them. Kanai then decides to cease any attempt at telling her how she feels after she sees he's looking far beyond what's right in front of him. The final part, titled 5 centimeters per second, is set 9 years later and a year into the future in 2008 at the time. Takaki had just quit his job as a programmer and is becoming really depressed after ending his current relationship. Meanwhile, Akari is the exact opposite. She is actually preparing to get married. Both Takaki and Akari re recall a dream they both had where they relived their first meeting together back in part one, and the movie ends with easily the most iconic scene in the film. If you were ever to ask anybody about this film, and the first thing they'll think of, they're going to think of this scene 100%. Without acknowledging each other's presence, Takaki and Akari walk in different directions past each other on the railway they once walked on together when they were kids. On the opposite sides of the tracks, they both turn back to face each other, only to be cut off by a passing train. When the train is gone, Takaki doesn't see anyone on the other side. After this, he smiles to himself shortly afterwards and keeps walking, a sign that fate doesn't have it in the cards for a possible reunion anytime soon. After the movie came out, Shinkai released a light novel adaptation in November of 2007, and while Shinkai was working on his next film, Children Who Chase Lost Voices, again, I still have a few things to say about that. A manga was released that had two volumes come out in 2010 and 2011, with both of them telling the same story. Another version of the novel, titled 5 Centimeters Per Second, One More Side, was released in Japan in 2011 and was yet another 
Shinkai title that was released here in the United States back in February of 2019. Very similar to the side story to Voices of a Distant Star when I reviewed that. But the most memorable piece of work didn't even come from Shinkai directly in any way. In September of 2009, a state-run Chinese TV animation series titled Jing Ling Zi Shuang, or Spirit's Window, I hope I did not butcher that, had been accused of copying several backgrounds and scenes from the film with only a few minor changes. The scenes with the black bars are Spirit's Windows, while the other scene is 5 centimeters, the one that doesn't have black windows. Anyone who's looking at it on the screen... The show's production company would conduct an investigation and found out that out of 2,500 sequences of Spirit's Window at the time, only 28 resembled 5 centimeters per second, and concluded that it was in result to the local government's propaganda department who was in charge of looking over these studios that created these shows, not checking them well enough, and by November, it said that all the sequences in question were corrected. The most recent news I could find about the situation was two years later in 2011 when that show won their region's highest art and literature award, which caused a stir in China due to the allegations two years prior. prior. The first thing I wanted to mention about five centimeters per second is, funny enough, the animation. This is one of the few things that resonated throughout the whole film rather than being different during all three parts, and it was magnificent. The background details, the lighting, the camera angles, all of it is really good. So good, in fact, that it outweighs the only negative thing I have to say about it, which is the character designs. They still look rough, but everything around them have, has been improved tenfold that I could give two shits about what the characters look like. The music was surprisingly more scarce than I thought it would be. In the first part, there were some piano pieces reminiscent of what the composer Tenmon did in Voices of a Distant Star. The second part only had a couple piano pieces, but mostly there wasn't anything. And the final part had nothing until the background song started playing, the ending song titled One More Time, One More Chance, a song by Masayoshi Yamazaki that was originally released for a completely different film in 1997, but was re-released just to be on this film 10 years later. I gotta be honest, after listening to this song to prepare myself to review this, is left me with the conclusion that if Shinkai never went to Radwimps for their music for Your Name and Weathering With You, I would have said this was the best song from a Shinkai film. For anyone who wants to hear this song, I'm gonna link it down below. It is a very, very good listen uh, for anyone who wants to hear it. The story takes on a different meaning in all three parts. Part 1 looked at a realistic representation of young love without it going way too far. Part 2 focuses on unrequited love with a pretty disconcerting end result depending on who you are. And the third part is easily the most hard-hitting because instead of the film showing Takaki still being depressed even when the encounter with the train takes place or something or someone on the other side is actually waiting for him, indicating that he has somewhere else to go or someone that he can just go to, the movie ends with just him accepting that, yeah, this whole thing may not work, I'm going to move on with my life. While Voices of a Distant Star is about trying to keep a connection and places promised in our early days, or the place promised in our early days, I keep getting those mixed up, is about trying to get a connection back, 5 centimeters per second is about just letting go and being happy with what you have now, rather than thinking about what you've had in the past and what you hope to have in the future. This is also why I keep hearing stories about how this film changed a lot of people's lives, for better or worse. Because when we watch anything romance-related anywhere else, we're used to seeing a story about someone who tries to get who they think could be their significant other, other but ends up meeting their actual significant other in someone else in something completely different because that plot line is so common in our society today it messes with people's psyche it messes with my psyche sometimes and i'm pretty sure it messes with your psyche about what makes us happy in life which would eventually lead people towards dark paths like alcoholism and depression what this movie does is remind you to not follow that to remind you that you can live your life and do what you want to do without being restrained by something and you don't know if it will happen or not this movie is in another way telling you to think for yourself and not have the masses tell you what sh you should be happy about. It's a way more realistic look at what happens in this type of situation, and it's pretty hard finding anything else that has this trait and executes it very well in any form of media. 
as I'm writing this script, uh, I'm also listening to a lot of music on my phone on Spotify. So I think it would be fitting to suggest one of my favorite pop songs by one of the best artists to ever do it that fully exemplifies what this movie represents. I'm not going to say what the song is. I'm not going to say what the artist is. I'm going to let you find out for yourself. And I'm going to link the song down below for anyone who wants to know what it is. No is not an anime song, but regardless, I still highly suggest it. Overall, it's clear as day why 5 centimeters per second had this high regard over other anime films during this time in the late 2000s. Shinkai was able to incorporate all of his well-known components into this film, from the lighting, to the dialogue, to the scene selections, to the so very well done it's scary real-world settings, while also having a mature message about letting something go instead of trying to reclaim it, because at the end of the day, this hour-long film isn't a love story. It's a story about love. And with that, for the first time in a while, I'm going to give 5 centimeters per second a 10 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching this latest edition of the Makoto Shinkai Project. Uh, I know this was pretty hard hitting. Uh, to be honest, I've got to get used to that when I'm reviewing the rest of this guy's stuff. If you like this movie, if you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see any more videos like this in the future, there is a subscribe button either on the screen or down under the video. And, there, and if there's any videos that you want to see in the past that I've made, there are videos on the screen as well as down on my channel as well. And with that, my name is Payne, and I'll see you in the next video, guys.